now want to solve this equation. And the first step in solving these equations would be to factor denominators. We can see this one has a 2 in common. So this factors into 2x plus 1. And this has a 4 in common. So 4x plus 1. And the next step would be to find the least common denominator. We can see that they all have an x plus 1 on the denominator. In addition, we have a 2 and a 4. And the least common denominator between 2 and 4 is 4. So I'm going to multiply everything by 4x plus 1. So I have negative 2x over 2 times x plus 1 times 4x plus 1, which is equal to 2x over 4x plus 1 times 4 x plus 1 plus 6x minus 1 over x plus 1 times 4 x plus 1. So here the x plus 1's will cancel. I have negative 2's that are also going to cancel. I end up with a negative x times 4 to get negative 4x. Here my x plus 1's cancel along with my 4's. So I just end up with 2x. Here the x plus 1's cancel. So I have a 4 times 6x minus 1. So negative 4x is equal to 2x plus 4 times 6 is 24 and 4 times 1 is 4. Combining like terms, 2x plus 24x is 26x minus 4. I can subtract 26x from both sides to get like terms together. That gives me a negative 30x is equal to minus 4. I can then divide by negative 30. And this gives me x is, pos is negative 4 over negative 30, so positive 4 over 30, which then reduces to 2 over 15. Anytime I'm solving an equation involving fractions, I need to double check that this does not give me 0 in a denominator. And I can see that it doesn't. And therefore, my answer is 2 over 15. So a contractor finds that it takes Sam Tockett 10 hours to construct a wall of a certain size. It takes Jim Louse 6 hours to construct the same wall. So how long would it take if they worked together? So for this one, we have to use the formula 1 over A plus 1 over B is equal to 1 over T. So I know that it takes Sam 10 hours, and it takes Jim 6 hours. So we need to multiply by the common denominator. The least common denominator between 10 and 6 is 30. So we're going to multiply by 30t. So I have 1 over 10 times 30t, plus 1 over 6 times 30t is equal to 1 over t times 30t. So this is 3t plus 5t is equal to 30. So 8t is equal to 30. We can then divide both sides by 8. So I get t is 30 over 8. And once we simplify this, we get 3 and 3 fourths. So it'll take them 3 and 3 quarters hours. Chuck and Dana agree to meet in Chicago for the weekend. Chuck travels 185 miles, and the same time it takes Dana to travel 160 miles. If Chuck's rate of travel is 5 miles per hour more than Dana's, and they travel the same length of time, at what speed does Chuck travel? So anytime we're dealing with distance, we'll have our distance equals rate times time formula. And the best way to do this will be to make a chart. So, I have Chuck and Dana. So Chuck travels 185 miles. 
Dana travels 160. However, their time is the same. We don't know exactly what that time is, but we know it's the same, so we'll use t to represent that. We also know Chuck travels 5 miles per hour more than Dana. So if Dana is x, Chuck is x plus 5. So my first equation, distance, is equal to rate times time. And my second equation, distance, is equal to rate times time. The easiest way to do this one would be to take this second equation and divide by x to get 160 over x is equal to t. And now we'll substitute that into this first equation. So instead of t, I'm going to have 160 over x. I can go ahead and multiply everything by the denominator here. When I do, I get 185x is equal to x plus 5 times 160. So 185x is equal to 160x plus 5 times 160 will be 800. We'll subtract 160x to get the x's together. When we do that, I get 25x is equal to 800. Dividing by 25 gives me 32. So keep in mind x is equal to 32. The problem actually asks for Chuck's speed, which is x plus 5. So my actual answer would be 32 plus 5, which is 37. Let's multiply, and then if possible, simplify. So, square roots can be broken up under multiplication, which means this is the same thing as 3 times 21, which is 63. x squared times x to the fifth, we add exponents. 2 plus 5 is 7. And with y, I have a 1 plus 8 is 9. And then we're going to rewrite this. 63 is 9 times 7. x to the 7th is x to the 6 times 7. y to the 9th is y to the 8th times y. We know the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x to the 6th is x cubed. And the square root of y to the 8th is y to the 4th. We still have a 7, an x, and a y underneath the square root. Let's rationalize the denominator. So when we're rationalizing the denominator, we need to multiply by the conjugate. And the conjugate comes by looking at the denominator and changing the sign in the middle. So we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom so that we're actually multiplying by 1, so we're not changing anything. When we multiply this, we do need to FOIL. So my first two terms is 4 times the square root of 5. The outside terms will say negative square root of 10. My inside terms are plus 4. My last terms are minus the square root of 2. On the denominator, the first terms, 4 times 4 is 16. Outside terms gives me minus 4 square root of 2. The inside gives me 4 square root of 2. And then two time, uh, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. So, the top does not simplify at all, so we'll leave it the way it is. On the denominator, 16 minus 2 is 14. And then this is negative 4 squared of 2 plus 4 squared of 2, which gives me 0.